Hey everyone, this is Laravel DFW for June 2015. And uh, yeah, it's a good week. So I'm Tanner Hearn, uh, one of the organizers of Laravel DFW. I'm here with Osvaldo. Um, Osvaldo, how are you doing this week? Doing good, having fun. Cool, so uh, Osvaldo is going to talk to us today about Platform, um, which is a Cardless package. And Cardless has a lot of packages that are really great. Um, before he starts, I just wanted to lay out a couple of things. Um, Osvaldo and uh, Seth, if any of you guys know him, we've been talking a little bit and we're, we have uh, some good plans coming up for Laravel DFW. We're um, making some, some good progress. It's going to be really cool. So uh, be on the lookout for some emails from us soon, um, probably in the next, before the next meetup. Um, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, we're talking about some just different ways to connect people and communication, and I'm pretty excited about it. Um, so beyond that, um, Osvaldo, why don't you go ahead and start? Um, so you you talked with us a little bit last week. Um, la I mean, last month in May, we met in person, and that was great. Um, we had some people show up. It was great in the kind of the mid cities area between Fort Worth and Dallas. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to you kind of diving deeper and and just the more because you were in the middle of a project. So I'm curious to see kind of where you've come since then and picking it up. But uh, yeah, so why don't you just kind of start out? Sure. Yeah, this is uh, <clears throat> gonna be. Uh, a bit improvised, I didn't really prepare anything, but I'm just gonna walk you through um, the platform CMS uh, based on my experience, with, which just has been maybe a month using it, but it's pretty great. I'm gonna show you why. Very cool. I'm gonna share my screen, just a moment. And this is the Cardalist uh, website, cardalist.com. And they have a bunch of framework agnostic packages. And you know, they solve many common problems that you encounter, you know. Uh, that's the purpose of packages, you know. So um right. of they have tons of, of packages here, but I'm gonna, I'm maybe gonna go through each one and mention a couple of that I've used. Uh, but then we're gonna jump into the, applica the application package, which is platform right here. And they have great documentation for everything you can see here. They have a membership uh, program so it's it's not the most packages are not free there's a couple of them that are open source like sentry uh i'm sure you've heard of that one and sentinel is the big brother of sentry uh this big uh auth package and um you can see here there's a uh, a couple of uh, application specific packages and then there's extensions which are packages for uh, the platform CMS so if you jump to the uh, platform manual and uh, most manuals look the same they which is good they have the same layouts you see a side menu and yeah, that's nice. an introduction uh, couple of examples is really nice um, and so you can see here an overview of the features uh, authentication role based uh, user management and permis permissions social authentication uh, the uh, theme system extension system uh, it, the admin is uh, theme with bootstrap by default, uh, but you can change it if you want. Um, uh, there's pages, uh, content, menus, settings, tags, 
attributes scaffolding which is my favorite feature of all it's like super awesome and i'll show you why uh pretty soon uh widgets media uh, which basically uh i believe is built on top of fly system because really platform is built on top of laravel 5 which is sweet yeah that and, sounds good uh, for the most part, it gets out of your way. Uh, you're able to develop with, uh, you know, pure Laravel package uh, uh, code and or packages, or you know, just plain PHP. If you want, it, it's not gonna get in your way. But you can take advantage and integrate with some of the features because most of them are bound to the IOC container. And so you're able to replace services and uh, do a bunch of stuff. And basically, you know, I started, and I'm sure you're on the same boat with me, is that, you know, you want to save time. You don't want to start a CMS from scratch. Maybe, you know, you're starting to build an application and you don't want to build you know, user management and permissions, that is so tedious. And and it's always the same. Why build it every time? So you have right. basic things you will need for, you know, your typical application and an admin interface. And, you know, you can get started and roll out a project really quick. So, you know, it goes uh, on an introduction here, uh, the installation Basically, you clone it. Uh, you install the compulsory dependencies, and then you can just jump to the to the CMS. Uh, right now, I just uh, cloned it and run uh, composer install, and uh, I'm running MAMP and uh, set up this uh, host. So I'm gonna try, and hopefully, this will run correctly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have a question while yeah. you're, uh, right before we do that. So you mentioned Sentry and Sentinel. I know a lot of people are probably familiar with those packages. Um, probably, you know, because they're the, some of the free ones that handle user management. So I assume Platform consumes those. Uh, platform right? is Sentinel. Uh, right. Because Platform is part of the paid subscription which is basically, I think, 75-ish, uh, three months. And they mentioned that it might go up. I think, uh, I mean, last time we met, I had a coupon. Uh, hopefully, it's it hasn't expired and you can still use it. So I'm, uh, I'm going to send that out to uh, the people that attended the, the meetup, uh, that mm -hmm. I see a meetup. Uh, because I'm not sure, I don't want to put it on the video if it has expired. So um, I'm just going to send that out through email to see, you know, and maybe you can try it out and get a discount. And they, they mentioned if you want to join, now is the time because the price is going to go up uh, significantly. And with good reason, I mean, because they, they're a team dedicated to maintain all those packages and the what they call the arsenal which is the collection of all the packages is growing and they're looking they're also looking for people to help build more packages and extensions for a platform and they'll give you you know discounts uh for contributions and all that stuff i might jump in myself and uh because there's a couple of things uh that i'm sure are missing on the on the cms then I could I could contribute. Uh, there's always room for improvement, and um, based on my experience, I'm just gonna show you the pros and cons of different things I found. Most are pros, pros. Uh, you know, uh, luckily, uh, not much. It's pretty <laughs> right. it's pretty stable. Uh, it's just a, some gotchas here and there, but uh, most of it is really awesome. So. I'm just going to double check that I actually have a database over here. OK, so there's not. I'm just going to create. 
here an empty database for platform. And let's see. So that would be the username. And you see, you choose your driver. I'm going to choose MySQL. Databases platform. Uh, boot. Never change that. Uh, and you can leave the, the rest, the defaults. You don't really need a prefix, but you can use one if you want to. So uh, let, let me cross my fingers, and hopefully this will run correctly. It looks like it did, because by now it would have you know, halted or something. When you see that green bar right. through, it's, everything's good. So, rock on. Very nice. Installed. Um, with some sample data and, uh, you know, sam you have a, a sample theme here which you can just copy and modify. Some of these content are displayed with uh, widgets. Uh, with content, uh, there is a content widget which allows you to reference a widget that you manage on the admin, which is just a piece, just a little bit of content, and you can reference it on a Blade template, and uh, that way you can, you know, design but delegate the management to a user on the admin. Mm, very cool. So let's see, let's sign in, and I'm logged in. I'm gonna jump to administration. Uh, pretty nice look. So all of this has been just out of the box, right? Yep. Yeah, I just installed fresh. Uh, everything brand new, out of out of the box pages, content, media, attributes, menus, access under access. There's users and roles and permissions, operations, stuff related to development, which um, you have your extensions list. And uh, most of the functionality for platform are extensions, which in turn are follow the standard of Composer packages and PSR, and pretty much, uh, you know, in harmony with uh, Laravel. Five. Very Workshop. Nice. Let's see. Here you can set your vendor template. This is sort of like setting up what would be the the old um, workbench uh, settings on the the config. If you run the 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 CLI uh, for generating a package. But that that was that got removed. But you know, nice thing about um, one of the coolest things about platform is the the scaffolding, and basically this would be your settings for uh, scaffolding your extensions, your custom extensions, and they would um, have a composer JSON file where you could add dependencies. And so this will be your vendor. I'm just gonna. To my vendor here. And uh, extension, uh, maybe some example like uh, posts, extension details. This would be, oh yes, because this would be for a new package. You know what, I confused uh, this for the settings. This would be for creating a new package. The actual information is over here. Let me go back so you can see it. Oh, okay. Okay, so at the top right, there's settings, the settings icon. And I jump over there and I have a couple of tabs and settings. These are global settings for the platform. And there's the workshop settings. And here's where I can uh, set up my default vendor. Uh, I'm just going to set it here. Okay. 
errors. Okay, so now we can go back here to workshop. And I'm gonna generate a new extension. Uh, let's call it post. Basically, this will re generate a whole package with a bunch of code and, and crude uh, functionality and uh, uh, you know your service provider and uh, I'll show you in a moment. Dependencies, I'm just gonna leave it blank. I'm gonna save that. Oh, it's required, okay. Let's just do something here. Hopefully this worked. And I say that uh, because sometimes, depending on permissions, you have to have right permissions right. so that it's able to generate the code. Uh, looks like it did. Uh, cool thing is that it takes you to the extension immediately. Uh, this, uh, let me show you what that means. If you go to extensions, you have the list of extensions and that, ex that includes yours. So you can see the one I generated here. It's uh, let me go, go back. It's uninstalled, right? Mm. So I'm gonna jump to the extension and here's a bunch of cool stuff. This is my, my favorite part of the whole platform. And uh, let's see what happened on the code. Let me close this stuff. A bunch of windows. I have uh, the platform open here on PHP Storm. I'm going to show you the basic uh, folder structure. It's pretty much a Laravel 5 structure. It brings yeah. back a workbench folder but it, it's different. This works than the old workbench. This is uh, the platform workbench and it does a bunch of stuff to load um, your packages without having to register with a composer, basically. Mm -hmm. like, the, like the old one, but it's not, it, they did a custom thing for that. And, um, you can see the code, uh, it just generated a bunch of folders, compo the composer JSON. You can see it follows the, the composer standard with your vendor package and a bunch of stuff here. It generates a uh, extension PHP file at the root of your package. And this is, uh, this is where you set a lot of things like routes. You register most of the things um for the extension um it's sort of like um as you would on laravel but it's the platform style of registering because the extension hooks into the platform events to do different things and uh as it loads and uh let me show you uh, also what that means uh, on the app folder uh, we have a couple of uh, special files here, including hooks. And here you get an idea of the boot process, uh, specifically the custom platform boot process. And uh, these are hooks uh, for the installer. There's for when the platform is booting. And you can do a, you know different things here directly. And uh, there's a special hook for um, when pages are about to render and you can register some variables. Uh, I've used it and it's really, really nice. This just allows you to solve, you know, problems quickly. And uh, there's uh, the widgets file, which uh, you can register widgets basically with the key that you will reference on the template and the class method that it maps to. And it does a lot. Yeah. It, uh, and this will um, allow you to inject um, dependencies on the construct and um, it, will, it will take arguments uh, from the template. And I'll show you an example uh, pretty soon. 
Okay, so back to the extension. Let's see what else is here. Okay, so there's Workbench, and there's also extensions here, which is the core platform extensions. And a good way to learn how the extensions are built is to look through these. And what happens is that similar to the vendor folder, things are installed by Composer in the extensions folder. Basically, is these are Composer packages. What, what happened is that there is, they have a Cardalist um, Composer installers package that modifies the Composer installation. So when you run Composer install, it installs all the vendor dependencies. And in the same way, it installs their pack, their composer packages. But they actually have their own composer repository as a sadist, uh, satis, I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> um, as a sadist <laughs> package. Uh, right. so it's just, uh, English is my second language. <laughs> So um, what the cool thing about that is that when you run Composer install, these uh, dependencies get installed super quick because they don't, Composer don't have, doesn't have to search through the entire Composer uh, you know, repository for these. Obviously, there's other dependencies, but uh, this installs pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I, I personally, I love that they follow that standard, and they're just, uh, and that that follows their set the philosophy that they're trying to create a framework agnostic packages, and so um, I think that's nice for the PHP community in general. You don't have to, you don't have to use their packages with a specific framework. Uh, however. Platform is built on top of Laravel 5, so um, it has is tied to to Laravel stuff. Very cool. So, but that's uh, that's that could be an advantage, you know. If you're fluent with Laravel, you can take advantage of that. If you know Laravel, you're gonna be e uh, to uh, you're gonna be gonna be able to easily create extensions because it's all the same. Um, and let me show you. One of the most uh, simple ones, maybe this. And you can see here the content, the platform content uh, extension. Um, it has a source folder here. It has uh, an interesting folder that extensions can have is the themes, which uh, allow you to publish views and assets to the public folder of your application. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you can see there's an admin because um, you can have admin and front end uh, themes. And okay. here is the default uh, theme. The so, what's inside of it? Let me show you. I think this got published. So you can also see the f the files over here in the public mm, admin default folder. So it has the assets folder. It has uh, extensions, which are assets and views published from extensions, right? And each of those mm -hmm. uh, can be reached through um the different uh view namespaces let's say and this this you would do in a on a on a controller but i'm just gonna show you an example like let's say if you did view you know and you can reference uh an extension um a vendor extension view like this and following my vendor let's say post and uh you know and you know you'll be able to reference that view with uh, that namespace. 
that sort of thing. Right. Uh, and you have your views here. You have layouts, partials, and this is the admin. Let's let's take a look at the front end. Front end views. We have a bit more. We have content, and content, all the views templates that you have here, and you can see it supports other extensions like Markdown, uh, HTML. Uh, you can reference from the administration by creating a, a piece of content, and I'm going to show you that in, in a moment. You have layouts. Pages can be selected from the admin too. And you have partials. So, okay, let's go back to the admin. And let's take a look at pages. We have two pages here. I'm going to go to edit about. And uh, pretty simple. You can see it supports file based pages and you can select a view and which uh, lives in your theme under the pages folder hmm. on, on the public theme and uh, you set your URI here name slug you can force it force HTTPS you can uh, disable it if you want to you can restrict access, logged in or admin only, roles. Haven't played with this, but you get the idea. Yeah. And it has database driven pages. And uh, just as easy. This, uh, this editor is nice. I, and this is one of those uh, pros and cons uh, comments. It's nice, it's very simple, it's beautiful, but it is limited. I don't believe you can insert images with this, but they're, they're aware of that, and there's talks about upgrading this, this uh, editor, uh, you know, to be more feature-rich. But mm -hmm. I, I like the simplicity of, of the whole thing. And uh, here's the name of the section. Uh, let's see. Which section to inject the value to? So apparently, by default, I think this is going to be page. That's going to be the section. And let's take a look at that. If I jump to public, themes, front end, default, views, pages, and um, Or where is it? Lay layouts would be, I think, default. Here it is. It would be this. I think this would be the default page, if I'm not mistaken. That's where all the the, the content is injected uh, for the page. So would you edit that layout if you wanted to specify a different location? I think uh, never used it, but that's the impression I get. That's cool. Navigation, to be honest, I haven't used this yet. Tags are really interesting. Uh, tags are a polymorphic relation that are attached to different things. And the cool thing is that when you generate uh, code with the scaffolding, uh, your crude, um, you know, your repositories, and models, the code that it generates, it attaches tags to it, I believe, and attributes to. And that's another cool feature that allows you to attach extra data to mm -hmm. the model. That is very cool. It has, honestly, it's, it's nice, uh, but there's uh, room for improvement here because uh, there's a limited set of inputs that you can use, and 
maybe we can, you know, contribute a feature where you're able to specify other kinds of um, inputs, like maybe a color picker and all that sort of thing. Because it has a, right. it has like, you know, the basic, you know, text area, uh, select, not that sort of thing, but it's not ex extensible at the moment. So there's content. Let's go to content. And featured packages. And you can see here, it's quite similar to pages. The difference is that uh, you you reference this piece of content on a within a page or or any other view, and you reference it by slug. And so you're just going to render it from that markdown file. Yes. You do have the option of do, doing a database-driven content, or you can pick the file system based. And you pick the file here. And these files uh, live on your theme, as we saw earlier. Let's take a look at how content is referenced. So I'm guessing in the welcome page, here it is, content. It's a custom blade directive that they provided for content, and you, re you reference the, the slug for the content. Apparently, this is maybe a default value for it. Not sure. I have to see. Hmm. See here, feature packages, which in the admin is here. Right. You can see the content here. Media. Media is pretty good. Is it does its its job. You can also see that they have a standard grid they use across all the extensions for displaying, you know, a list of content. So uh, do you choose where the media gets uploaded to? No, it's pretty basic. It doesn't have it doesn't have folders. It's like a flat storage. Um, and it just saves to like the public directory. Um I believe so, but I believe it does it's built on top of um, Laravel's uh, file system, so it I think it supports um, cloud-based uh, media. You would just change the provider or something. I, I guess yeah. I guess you would edit the the configuration, but never. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, I see. so you're saying it would you would just change where Laravel is storing it since they're using Laravel. Right. Very cool. Um, let's see. It'd be super easy to do something on S3 or something like that if someone's using a, a platform like that. Yeah, exactly. Just never, I've never tried it myself. I am about to because I have a big project, uh, an e-commerce that has a lot of pictures. And yeah. I, I did migrate. Uh, I wrote like a migration script that migrates all the images and imports them here. Uh, so I'm guessing that if the if the up, upload um, execution extends the cloud uh, package, I mean the the cloud driver, right? It would upload to the cloud instead of to the local file system. So, but that's something I would have to. Uh, to try and maybe I'll let you, I'll let you guys know how it goes. Yeah, that sounds great. So here on attributes, uh, you can define and you can uh, see that the attributes that we saw earlier on pages are here, and you can assign new attributes to a namespace all. 
all extensions have a namespace in the same way that they they have a, a vendor package uh, uh, ex, uh, namespace, right? So I'm going to try to create one. I'm just going to name it test. I'm going to choose users. I'm going to attach an attribute to users, maybe something more meaningful. Users, uh, I don't know. I'm hungry, so I'm going to say meal. There you go. <laughs> Multi select. Hmm. Hamburger. This is this would this be the key? Probably. Or is that the title? Let me erase it. Option label value. Okay. So that's right. Oh my goodness. Okay, I can write. Hmm. Hmm, this is pretty easy. This is my first time doing this. Uh, what else? Pizza? That should be good enough. Uh, choose a meal. Save. Hmm. And let's go to access users. Hmm. Okay, so what happens? If you click on the user. Yeah, because it's in the form, but I'm not sure if it's displaying attributes by default. Oh, what's going on? It's pretty slow. Okay, there you go. So here it is, attributes. And I have my meal here, and I can select. Pretty That's sweet. cool. And it's a multi-select, so it's kind of like a uh, yeah, that's what I was uh, saying, that uh, it has a... Um, Polymorphism? Yes, the, all attributes, I'm going to show you how they're stored. They're polymorphic. Let's see how that's stored. Attributes, attribute values. Yeah, it's the attribute value. Mm -hmm. You can see the polymorphic entity type and entry ID because there are, um, it is attached to a page. But what happened to, I saved the value for users. So let's see what happened here. Or did I save? Yeah, maybe it didn't save. Maybe it looked like on the attributes. The population does not match. OK. Yeah, because I have um, a password manager and it's trying to fill out but I'm just gonna leave it blank to see if it let me save because my I don't intend to change the password. Yeah, so it let me save. So it should have stored the attribute. So oh well. Oh, you know what? Maybe it it just it cleared uh, your input or something. It cleared it probably when it had the error. So maybe that's a bug. We can fix. I'm just gonna erase here, save, and we should see that. Yeah. There it is. There we go. Pizza. Hmm. This is weird. How it stores it. Yeah, it stores it in kind of a JSON format or something. Serialized. Yeah. All right. Let's take a look at roles. Yep, admin registered by default. I'm gonna go. Well, admin should has has access to everything, so I don't think you you don't even have to edit any of this. Even though it has deny by default, I think admin has access to everything. So, if you were to give access to things, you can. Oh, I see. Very nice. Specific here. Um, and there's a way where you can um, register custom permissions from your extension, and uh, they will begin to appear here 
under your uh, custom package uh, name. That's very nice. So do, uh, where were the other roles you had? Is it just one right now? It's a uh, ro uh, registered and admin. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. By default. But you can create as many as you want. And I think, because right, usually the, the best practice to handle develop an application with permissions is to make reference to permissions in your application and then the roles you 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 shouldn't reference roles from your application because they can be deleted mm -hmm. i guess the only exception would be admin because the slug could maybe and i'm this is a wild guess maybe it's checked you know if admin you know allow anything right the rest of the roles you just create and you should reference permissions on your application Mm. And uh, let's let's uh, use the the scaffold feature. I'm gonna go to my, my custom extension. And you said I, this is your favorite thing, right? Yes, yes. Um, you can see there's uh, there's nothing here, but it gives you an idea of what you can generate: controllers, repositories, widgets, migration seeds. You know, maybe it generates more code than what you need, but personally, I don't care. I love it. Because then I can just delete what I don't need, or I can just start tweaking and start getting results immediately. Right. And, and you have a deadline, you know, a project that you need to roll out quickly. It makes a difference. So, I did generate my extension, it's called post, but I really have no code. So I'm gonna generate my first entity, or rather scaffold it. I'm gonna call it post, and I'm gonna scaffold everything. And here, you can see more detail of uh, what you get. You click that, and it also asks you if you wanna, how you wanna create your migration. You can select. I guess it generates a bit of um, sample code for the seed. Hmm. Uh, but I don't really care much about this. It just generates a seeder and uh, it's a good start. So it has some uh, buttons down here and you can see the time sp timestamps are marked by default and out of in increment so you don't have to do id because it will generate the migration code for the id for you you mm. can start with your custom columns and you don't have to do timestamps it will generate the code for the timestamps very nice uh, post what if you click timestamps what does it do you can disable them, and what it does is it will generate a migration without the timestamps. And I mean, is, is the timestamps button itself like where you can select anything, or is that just a label? Just to the left. What do you mean? Uh, oh, like if you, yeah, is that disable it? Right, or just to the left of it where it says timestamps. Oh, it's yeah, yeah. Oh, it's just okay. I was wondering if you could select um, if you wanted a different one. Okay, very cool. Yeah. Yeah. It gives you some a tool tip, but it's the mm -hmm. it's just one a single like a group button. Very cool. And uh, I'm gonna select here, and this is nice because uh, it gives you the standard mm -hmm. methods for the schema. I'm gonna choose string for the title. If I leave nullable without, you know, empty, it's gonna, you know, be required. It's not gonna be nullable, but you can make it nullable or unsigned. Let's say usually, if you have a relationship, I usually do uh, unsigned integer 
and that will mean it will go from zero up. So if you select unsigned integer, does it automatically select unsigned for you? It doesn't. Oh, okay. But it will use that method, which is the same thing. Oh, I see. So it's just optional. So I'm just going to do the title for now. And um, I think we're good. I'm going to generate that. And let's take a look here. It, it scans the your extension, and it constantly displays the current state of your code. So it will give you a list of all your controllers, repositories, which is nice. <clears throat> Having this list, it gives you an overview of how your extension is looking. Widgets, migrations, seeds, models, data grid. And data grid saves you a lot of time uh, because it will generate the grad data grid for your repository. You know, you'll have like an admin out of the gate. And then you can modify it if you want. Let's go to the files. See what it generated. So on Workbench, we can see here it generated a bunch of code. Controller, post controller, the admin, post controller, handlers, data handlers for the for the data grid, or rather the repository, events. Event handler, and uh, these are already already connected to the repository. So all you have to do is jump in and start create. You know, programming your business logic. Host already your model set up. It extends the cardless. Oh, it's the eloquent model. Okay. It just has uh, a couple of traits that add some functionality for the for the attributes, and uh, for namespacing the model so that they can you can manage things that are namespaced from the admin. Very cool. You have your service provider, and it will generate a service provider for each entity. Um, and you get the idea here. This is something, this is uh, another pros and cons. This is really helpful. What I'm not sure is uh, so great is that it's binding against um, a dotted lowercase namespace. And this is not the best thing if you want to inject an interface into, you know, a, con uh, a controller or anything that's bound to the IOC. But I just usually just, you know, create my own interface. So you, for example, you would have post right? I can bind it that way, and that way, if uh, you know, I can reference it. Let's create it. Mm, I see. So the repositories are here, and there is an interface. I just don't get why they don't bind it by default. That's maybe something a conversation I'm gonna have with them. Maybe it's doing it. I don't think it is. Somewhere else. If it did, it would have had appeared here in the service provider, but it's not. So basically, this ex okay, it's implementing the interface, so it should allow me to inject. Hmm, it is injected. Hmm, maybe I was mistaken. Maybe it is bound. Am I missing something here? No, I think that's. I think it is injected. It might just be using a different syntax. Maybe maybe it has like a, some sort of um, guessing thing where it guesses the the inter the um, the bound uh, class based like on the same name. Yeah. 
Hmm. I gotta see how it's, it's doing that magically somewhere. I don't know. We'll get back to that some other day. Anyway, you can see it generates a bunch of code, saves you a lot of time, generates widgets for you. Widgets are very simple. It's just one method, show, and you return a string, and you can return a view. Right? And you can also inject dependencies into the, the construct. I could do post repository interface. Could be an example, mm -hmm. you and you're done, and then you can do whatever on your template. You know, you have your themes. Um, it generates a bunch of views for you for the admin, and that includes the data grid for your entity. Very right. cool. You can see here. So I'm just gonna install, and the other thing important is the migrations and seeds. You can see generated this code. You can keep modifying it. Cedar. And you have uh, the faker library commented out, but you can start using it right there. So let's go to the admin. How are we with time? Um, we probably have maybe five or ten minutes. Okay, so do we have uh, do we have questions uh, at the end, or do you just want me to continue? I haven't received any yet. Um, if you have any, you can email them uh, to Tanner at LaravelDFW.com, or just tweet at LaravelDFW on Twitter, and we'll get them answered. So feel free to tweet at LaravelDFW. Yeah, I'll be on the lookout and I'll answer any questions. Um, okay, so we have all this code, so let's uh, install it. And what will this what this will do is uh, it will run the migration, or rather, all the migrations in the extension. How how would you uh, re can you reverse the install? Oh, I guess uninstall would then. Yes, it will run the the migration. Um, the down method. Right, the down method. So after you install it, you have to enable it for it to start being active on the CMS. And you can see here, post, post, post the extension, post the entity. And what it did, it automatically created a menu that then we can edit. Oh, I see. On the admin. Oh, wow, that's cool. So if you wanted to, could you just make that a top level item? Yes. We have the same name, but let's just um, just gonna remove this one. Yeah. Oh, it has that little toggle too on the right. Which does that just make inactive or something? Let me go back. What do you mean? On the far right, like if you, if what is that? Oh, that's just open or close. I see. The details, and these are the basic details, and then you get more details if you click advance. Mm. And, uh, you have a, a class there you can use for icons. Oh, cool. So it uses, uh, what is uh, Font Awesome? Yeah, Font Awesome. Yes. You have visibility. 
Here's the parent. Uh, oh, there is. What is under visibility? Visibility for restricting mm -hmm. access to to only logged in or that's that's cool. So you can change it based on if there's guests or whatnot. Yeah, I would. See, I will have to see if this can if these options can be extended. I'm not sure because I'm guessing you would want some custom um, settings. Right. Or maybe it, uh, it inherits permissions, but I'm not sure. Never tried it before. Yeah. OK. So there's that. And um, let's go to the extension, uh, the entity. You can see here, I have my data grid. I can start. And keep in mind, I haven't written yeah, a just the title. Code. Yeah, you have a real line of code. It's crazy. Yep. There's my record. I can I can edit. You know, you can uh, because it generated all those views. You can just go in and edit. You know, and because you might not want these columns, but you just uh, go into the controller and the view. And you customize things, but this is pretty good. Uh, it's, it has pretty good filters too. Mm -hmm. uh, it has uh, pagination. You know. Now let's search. Filter this. Okay. You know, pretty easy. You can see the tag here. Yeah. You know, show enabled only. That's cool. But this sort of thing works if you have um, an enabled field on your database. Which yeah, I was about to ask. I guess you need to set some sort of Boolean for that to work. Yeah, so the scaffolding is not perfect. It's just a good start to develop. How do you, what if you want to add a field to posts now that it's created? Oh, it's not, it's not extensible in the sense that um you can just edit a class you just go into the view because it generated the code in a bunch of html for the form form so you just go and edit that so, so you would the, edit the form yeah that will be another of the pros and cons right because i see there's some cmss that have extensible form form systems mm -hmm. uh, um, you know field field type systems and all that, but this doesn't. This this generates the view from a standard scaffold template. Right. Then you, you can add stuff here, but it's not bad at all. I mean. So if you wanted to, but you would also need to add the database migration. So how would you run that? Uninstall and then reinstall it or something? Yes. There's a couple of uh, CLI commands, but I don't, I'm not sure if they have uh, a couple for migrations. Uh, if, they do, if they don't at the moment, that would be another nice feature to request from them because then right. it would be nice to do like a migrate, reset, dash, and your extension name. And then you can reset your, your database migration based on the last version like if you added a couple of fields here then you right. run it without having to reinstall again and all that but other than that i mean uninstalling and reinstalling is not bad either the other thing that's pretty cool is that you can run seeders from the admin once they're created I'm going to go to the extension, and you can click Run here. Runs that. Oh, very nice. So, so it, it generated 100 things, right? So if you go back to post, they'll be there? Not really, because it was uh, commented. Oh. But uh, if you had the migration, it would, yeah, if you had 
uncommented that it would have let's try it out see this is all commented oh so you have to it generated the the basics and then it uses faker for that okay Okay. Looks all good. Let's see if this should work. Running again. It had a problem, so that gives you that icon. Let's look at the log and see what happened. A non column enabled in where clause. Right, because our migration didn't include the enable column. Oh. Uh, but why? Hmm. There's no enable column here being seeded. Anyway, I'm pretty sure there's a reason for that. Right. Maybe it's uh, one of the what is it? Uh, one of the traits. One of the traits that handles, um, you know, stuff for the name, the model. Maybe it's referencing enable. And one of if one of its queries. So I'm just gonna do. I'm gonna reinstall. Let me double check here. Does your post table have a column yeah. for that? It's enabled. So that's a boolean. I'm gonna rerun it. So I'm gonna uninstall, reinstall, double check on the database to make sure that was created. Um, so post, where is that? Huh, it's weird. There it is. So um, title enabled. There it is. All the columns. Let's let's rerun it. Another exception. Class faker not found. I'm just gonna do something else. Maybe we have to. Uh, Something wrong with that dependency, but I'm gonna do a little test. I'm just gonna let these create automatically from that. Yeah, it ran correctly now. So let's see. This is just a test. It's gonna, right, the table says one to do, but you you get the idea. Yeah. It works. Like I said, not perfect, but pretty good. Right. So that's it. That's the, I mean, I could keep going on for hours, honestly, but I'm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's a great, um, a great summary for sure. So you are building an e-commerce platform on top of platform, right? It's rather, it's a, it, I won't say a, a platform uh, because it's not meant to be really to be distributed. It's just a, a store, a retail store yeah. mm -hmm. that, that needed to update their e-commerce application. It's like 10, 10 years old, and I'm redoing it with, uh, with this with platform. So and has it been going well in the past? Uh, I guess you've been using it for two months now? I think I've been using it for only a month. Because I switched, I was using a, a different CMS, and uh, so far it's been pretty quick with development. It hasn't gone, uh, you know. Uh, it's been out of my way as far as there hasn't been any, you know, uh, glaring issues or or bugs that stop me from developing anything. Right. So that's you know that's usually the issue when you have an unstable packages that they they kind of 
delay your development. And uh, so far, this is stable enough that I've been able to build the e-commerce site really quickly, you know, just with my knowledge of Laravel, because this is basically a Laravel application. And I'm right. also, I've also been uh, using uh, Angular for sprinkle, sprinkling Angular in a bit of uh, a couple of views. And what I do is I just create a couple of API controllers that just spit out JSON uh -huh. using the same repositories. I usually just do, like, if I have my entity right here, let's say um, controllers, I have admin, front end. And usually I, I leave this for handling views, and then I create another namespace for API. Right. And I say I want my post controller. And so you'll just run the same logic and then just have a different output. Yes, I reuse the same repository. I inject it into my uh, API controller, and uh, I return some JSON. I accept uh, some uh, JSON post into it too. So let's say you want extra routes, you will go into your extension PHP and in, in your extension. Yeah. And uh, routes, you can see the routes are here, and you can add more. And, That's cool. Uh, yeah, just create an, a group for the API and then start adding under there something like this. And then uh, you do posts and, uh, to the, and I reference the API namespace. And I can start listing my API stuff here. And you know, it's like I said, it doesn't get in your way. So you, you just do whatever you want. Very cool. Well, cool, Osvaldo. Where can people find out more about what you're doing? Just on your Twitter, or do you have a website? Yeah, my Twitter. I usually, you know, uh, I'm I'm not that active, but usually I retweet things that I think that are relevant, uh, that I like. Uh, sometimes I get excited about different technologies, and uh, you can hit me on Twitter. And that, I think that's the best way to 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 follow me because uh, that's. Uh, Twitter, that's the best thing. Well, cool. Well, uh, thanks for presenting that for us. And I know that platform has been helpful to you, and I've been interested to check it out for sure. It's um, it's by Cardalist if you're just joining us or just catching the end. So uh, I think that's Cardalist.com, right? Yes. Yeah, and they have how many packages does that say? 55? Yeah, 55 packages. Mm -hmm. And growing. So there's a lot of stuff that you can use on your applications and projects that you're building. Um, all of this stuff is super helpful. It's time that you don't have to spend. So very cool. Well, Oswaldo, thanks for presenting that. Um, again, thank you all for watching. Um, feel free to tell people they can check out this video to find out more uh, about Cardless and about Platform. Um, Oswaldo will post some info um, if that coupon is still available. And then um, just be on the lookout. Again, we're going to be coming up with some great stuff here in the next month. Um, it's going to be exciting. So uh, thank you. This is Larry Rolls FW for June. Um, we'll see you in July, and we'll, we'll be meeting in person. Um, so it'll be great. All right, see ya.